Good morning. Waiting for some folks to jump on here. Good morning, Amy. Betsy, good morning to you. Jessica. All right. Sam, man, good to see you on here. Angie, good morning. Lori, Keith, Lindsay. I say hi to everybody when I see you hop on here. Mary Kay, good morning. Alan. Paul. Paul, you've got like perfect attendance, man. I see you on here all the time. Kelly. Wow, so good to see you guys. Emily, good morning. Megan, good morning, Megan. Good to see you. Gabe. All right, Jason. I'll let a few more folks hop on here. Give it another minute. Mama, my mom's watching. This is better be good today, right guys? <laughs> All right. All right, lots of folks on here. So what is today? Goodness, today is Thursday, right? Um, we're almost to the end of another week. I don't know about you, but, well, actually, I do know a lot about a lot of you. We've been kidding about how it's difficult right now to even know what day it is. Um, I don't know about you. Some, some of us may or may not feel this way, but I feel like I'm getting my feet up under me a little bit and getting into a routine uh, after a month of what's been going on. But anyway, thank you for joining me. You are here for our daily devotional. This is about a 10-minute devotional that we do Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Different pastors from our church are doing this, so I'm glad to be able to be with you on this Thursday morning. And I want to I want to jump right into what I want to talk about today. Um, I want to give you a, a word for a Thursday morning that I wonder if you've ever heard. So when I say a word, I'm talking about like a, a, a dictionary word, all right? And this is a real word now. When I first heard it uh, in college, I did not think this was a word. I had to go look it up. Here's the word. I'm going to give you a word. You're going to learn something today beyond spiritual, all right? Um, and I wonder how many of you have heard this word. Maybe you can make a comment if you've heard it before. Here's the word, disequilibrate, all right? Not, not um, equilibrium. Obviously, that's the root word, but the word is disequilibrate. All right, so here's the thing. I heard that word for the very first time that I can remember in college in a class I was in, a ministry class. I was studying for Christian ministry, and the word had to do, watch this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to define it, but it had to do with the context of life change. I don't remember much more about the class that day. But when the professor said the word disequilibrate, I was just like, what is that? He's making this word up. You ever feel like people make words up? I felt like he was making the word up. I didn't understand it. Here's the thing. The word disequilibrate, watch this, is a verb. All right, there's a noun form of it, but it's a verb. And here's what it means if you look it up uh, online on Merriam-Webster Webster Dictionary, it means to put out of balance, all right? So to disequilibrate something is to put it out of balance. What it means is it felt like it was in balance, right? And then when you disequilibrate it, it it's out of balance. Some of you know that uh, about three years ago, I had my first vertigo episode. I've had several since. And I'm telling you what, man, talk about disequilibrating. I'm, I'm in balance and all of a sudden I, I just lose my, I can't even stand up. That's what it means to disequilibrate something or someone. Here's the thing I was thinking about. For many of us, right, this past month has felt like we've been disequilibrated, right? We've been put out of balance. Another part of the word can mean that you've been shaken so much that uh, the foundations that you have stood on have caused you to lose your, your balance, right? So to disequilibrate means like what you've been standing on 
has shaken and now it's crumbling beneath your feet and you don't feel like you can stand up. You're losing your balance. What we have stood on, many of us, myself included, for a long time has been shaken over the past month. There are things like wealth, um, the security of things, jobs, all these things, right? Um, myself, what I do every day, my routines, um, relationships. There are so many things that have been disequilibrated and, and put us out of balance. And, and I think that's happening to many, many people. And here's the thing. Disequilibration is very scary. It, it, it shakes you to your core because the thing that you've been standing on, all of a sudden you realize maybe this is not as secure as I thought it was. And, and you struggle. I struggle when I'm disequilibrated. But here's another thing. I want to give you another perspective. And this was what my class was about. It was actually, I'm going to refer, I just said that it was in the context of life change that we talked about disequilibrating people. The professor was saying that, you know, life change doesn't really happen unless somebody's disequilibrated. That is what they've been standing on is shaken. So even though it can be extremely scary to be disequilibrated, right? to be put out of balance for everything you're standing on to all of a sudden not be secure anymore. And you realize you thought it was secure, but now you realize maybe it's not so secure. It's also an opportunity, though it's scary. It's also an opportunity, though it's frightening. It's also an opportunity for us to find something to stand on that is more secure and will help us, I almost said, regain our balance, but the thing is, we were never really balanced in the first place if we were standing on something that wasn't secure. So to help you gain true balance in such a way, listen, that you'll never be disequilibrated again. I don't mean that some things won't shake you or challenge you or cause you to lose balance, some, but you'll look down and you'll realize that what you're standing on is secure, right? So. Um, What's the point of all this? What I felt this morning that I wanted to take aim at your heart. So if you're listening to this, and this is very intentional, very deliberate today, all right, a little bit different for a devotional for me. Um, I wanted to take aim at your heart. And so if you're watching this live or you're re-watching this, somebody shared it with you, I want to tell you uh, that I'm aiming at your heart today to give you balance and something secure to stand on, not just now, but for the rest of your life. If you're not a Christian and you're watching this, okay, if you're not a follower of Jesus and you're watching this, then I want to aim at your heart and I want to challenge you to consider something new to stand on because you've been shaken just like we all have. And you need security. You need balance. You need to know that what you're standing on is secure. So I want to challenge you if you're not a Christian or you're wondering if you're a Christian and you're watching this, um, consider what I'm about to say. If you are a Christian, like myself, I'm a follower of Jesus, you might discover, like I have even now, that there are times that um, what I'm standing on I thought was secure, but maybe I wasn't really standing on, on something secure. Does that make sense? Maybe even though I say I believe, I wonder if I, I really believe. So Paul, who was a writer to a group of Christians in the first century, um, wrote something that I was reading this morning that I want to read to you. It's from 1 Corinthians 15. This is security. This is the foundation for, for faith. This is what it means to be a Christian. There are so many things we like to talk about, argue about, struggle with, debate about in the Christian faith. But Paul wants to be sure that first century Christians and us in the 21st century, no matter what we're going through, and they were going through a lot, he wants to make sure we know what to stand on. So here's, here's what, what Paul says. 
Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you have received on, and on which you have taken your stand. This is what you're standing on, he says. By this gospel, you are saved, rescued, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. Then he says, for what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance. Y'all, what he's about to say is the most important thing. This is security. This is balance. This is where we get our equilibrium, okay? He says that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. That's Easter. We just celebrated that. So what Paul says is the ultimate foundation that is going to give us security, security above all securities, real security, not false security. It will help you be balanced when things come at you and you're like, am I going to make it or not? You start to shake back and forth. You look down and you wonder, am I really balanced? You will find that this is ultimately your security and your balance. And it's this. It's simply that Christ really did come to this earth that he really did die, that he really did physically resurrect from the dead, and that we attach ourselves to that truth and that hope above all else. And then I'm just going to skip to the last verse of that chapter. He says this. He says a lot about that. And then he says, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So what Paul's saying here is it's all about Christ and it's all about his death and resurrection. This is our hope. This is our security. Equilibrium comes from standing on something secure. I, I want to I wanna tell you that the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is secure. You can stand on it. No matter what happens, it will get you through. Even death will not shake you. When you die, when I die, I am held in the hands of Jesus Christ. And because he was dead and raised from the dead, I will be with him. Even death cannot shake our security in in him so y'all we can build our lives on all kinds of things and some of us have been doing it i know for me a lot of times i build myself on what i do as a pastor but that's not my security you know being a father is not my security i love it being a husband having some money in the bank and a lot of us have lost a lot of that right jobs all those and i'm not saying those things aren't hard but y'all they're not our security and if you've been disequilibrated because of those things i know it's scary i know it's scary but will you see it as an opportunity to find something secure to stand on and i hope when you do you find jesus i have discovered that in anything that's going on in my life no matter what jesus is my security. He gives me balance. He always brings me back to where I need to be. Y'all, I want to pray for you. Uh, if you're not a Christian, I want to pray for you. If you are a Christian, I want to pray for you. And thank you for hearing this today. I pray you consider it and that you find balance in Christ today and that you stand on something secure. Let me pray. Jesus, I give you thanks for my friends watching this today and hearing my voice. I pray, God, that we will find our security in you, your death and resurrection, physically, your death and resurrection, the reality of it will become real to us in such a way that we know it's what we can stand on and it will get us through no matter what. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey friends, it was good to be with you. I do wanna remind you if you're uh, tuning in on the weekend, we have a new series starting this weekend at Quest called Guardrails. So just go to questchurchlive.com and we're going to continue in the Old Testament. If you want to read ahead, our reading for this Sunday, we're getting back to the reading plan and the rooted plan, is 2 Samuel 11, the whole chapter, and then Psalm 51. Read those uh, two chapters of the Bible, 2 Samuel 11 and then Psalm 51, and I'll see you this weekend uh, for our worship services. God bless you, friends.